Okay, so today I am taking apart the, um, the, uh, x -Sentinel. And the reason I'm taking apart, and I figured I might as well do a video and show you guys the x and the internals. Uh, the reason I'm taking it apart is because I'm going to do, do some fine-tuning with the feeding. And so I'm going to go down the single spring. So I'm only going out with the huge spring on the outside. Now put in mind, there are a couple things with this thing. One, it does have less area because it's using an explorer breach. So it's more made for the breach to, for example, stop right here, like right there, you know, so that um, so that the feeding is perfect. And two, uh, it has a real heavy plunger rod on it, which you're going to see, which is made actually from um, from a from a 1024 uh, threaded spacer. It's actually a custom made um, plunger rod. It will never break, but and what happened was, I was running it, I was getting up in the 210, 220s, and it broke one of these handles. Actually broke the aluminum handle. I know you probably, people would find that just impossible. Well, not the yields I'm running. And when I take this apart, you'll probably see how I broke it. I actually broke the aluminum handle. And I did not break the U-junction before the handle, which, gives, which really makes me feel good. The U-junction is obviously really, really strong the way I did it. And I'll explain to you a little bit how I did it. Um, and I broke the, the actual priming rod before that. I must say that a lot of these mods, even though they're done in my style, laminate tape, epoxy, instead of JB Weld and a few other things, it's very, very much, um, inspired by, uh, Snoop Doggy Dog on, um, Nerf Haven, also known as Van James on Facebook. A lot of this stuff, it, it, the reinforcements you'll see, a lot of this is actually, I have to give him credit for that. But when it comes to the breach integration, the plunger rod, all that, okay, I did that stuff. Um, but uh, but it was really Van James who really who, who really broke out and, and, and came up with a lot of really good mods. He's a really good kid, uh, in my opinion, uh, in his heart, and I, I really do love him. It, you know, I really, he really, really, really want the best for him. And I know he's going through a lot of trouble right now with family, uh, people on Facebook, whatever. And I understand that, you know, I understand, but, you know, I've known the guy long enough that I, I, I understand. It's just growing up. But I love, I love you, Van. Really, whatever you're going through, just take care, do your best. Okay, so, I'm going to make sure all my screws are loose. Not that I don't have enough screws loo loose in life, but I'm talking about the blasters, not me. <laughs> okay. So, let's see here. Now this has a, a this is a spring assembly that has a shit ton of pre-compression, so I have to be real careful when I open this. Okay, there's about an inch of, of pre you're gonna see it, about an inch and a half of pre-compression on that spring because the spring is so long on it. You guys see that spring? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a freaking heavy duty fucking spring. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> oh, fuck. I just sent it flying, and I'm going to have to fix that breech finger again. <laughs> Don't worry, that's fixable. That's fixable. Um, <laughs> I just sent that going... <laughs> but look at that. Wow. And, you know, the fact that it breaks and how I have all those fiberglass things uh, going... Oh. This is really hard to do with a camera, by the way. Um, actually, actually, it's going to have all those exposed fibers there. That's kind of cool. Hold on. Crazy glue there. Crazy glue here. Crazy glue this a little on the outside. Fit that in there. Hit that like that. Let that press those two together a little. As you can see, the breech is completely custom. It's got a 9mm air dump rather than like a 30 caliber air dump like you get on your normal Explorer breeches. Breech is completely custom. <sighs> okay? It, it, they don't make a Sentinel kit for Explorer. Explorer doesn't make a Sentinel kit. However, I do make an Explorer Sentinel. But it's still in prototype stages as you can see. Okay. Let's, let's glue that real good. Might go back to that later. Okay, so here is the uh, silicone pad that's inside of it. So there's about, I would say, 
three sixteenths of an inch of epoxy on this side that holds the aluminum into there. Okay, and beyond that, and you can see it kind of here. You can see how far it goes. Another about three eighths of an inch of it is a pad of um, of silicone. That's solid silicone. This is how my plunger heads don't break. That's solid silicone going into a um, piece of 430 um, ID one half OD aluminum. That goes into this, that goes into here, and that is how it works. But I do use this outside here to uh, guide it in here because that's better for feeding. Uh, you can see that the barrel here, it's been repositioned and moved, reinforced with fiber tape. This is only for a dimension right here. It's only for the outside of here so this doesn't go too far. And it's also just, um, it's shaved right here, so it goes in here. The, it, this, the uh, Explorer breech on a Sentinel is really, really fucking tight. I mean, really fucking tight, okay? Um, okay. <sighs> Don't worry, that, that will be fixed. But you saw that get launched across the room. Look how much pre-comp I have, guys. Okay, the plunger's normally here, okay? The pad is another half an inch. So, if you look at this... That means that my that my plunger rod's about there. Look how much pre-comp I have. That's a Magnus spring and a uh, a Century spring. I think it's a Century C810. But if if I got the numbers wrong because uh, it, the catalog is listed different than Osh, it is a one inch by by eight inch by 24 coils by 0.091 spring gauge. That is a really really heavy duty spring right there. It's about I would say by itself it's about it's about 16 kilograms, but what does it is not the the is not the uh, the yield. It look, it's a pre comp. Wow, yeah, you can see it, you can see it. I mean that that sent this flying. Now look at the breach yet. Breach is okay. I fixed it. See, I fixed it. It's cool. I'm used to fixing this. Uh, I'm ha I've I've had to remember I've had to develop this. So I've had to fix this a bunch. A final version is gonna be great. Okay, so here's the U junction right here. Okay. You can, it's got two layers of fiber tape that are, uh, that are laminated with epoxy inside of it. And you, on this thing, you'll have pocket, then your, your next pocket will be on this side, and then your next pocket will be on that side. It separates them. So what I did is I took out the wall here, wall here, wall here, wall here. I laminated this one side, filled the whole thing with epoxy, so the epoxy chain is all the way around this loop, completely around this loop, so that... This is one solid piece of epoxy, and it has no plastic dividing it. And then I took the fiber tape, that same piece of fiber tape on the outside, and wrapped it all the way around. What this does is it makes it so when this pulls, the fiberglass reinforcements are pulling on this. And this is also epoxied in two layers in here. You can see there's some drag marks here, but the laminate is still intact, and that keeps this U-joint from breaking. The other side doesn't have any uh, fiber tape that's hooked into this. It, it has some here to reinforce on this side. But in reality, the cross-lateral fiber reinforcement is all here. This is one reason why I was able to pull 25K to the point where one of these actually broke and this didn't. Okay, so this is my other um, priming rod here. Uh, the one I had that broke actually had a 440 screw and two 440 nuts, and it was all glued together. This one just has this hammer tapped. I, have, I hammer tapped the pin on this side, and I tapped on this side so it can't go. But it does, it does actually hold up pretty nice. Um, if you do the, the, the bolts, the bolt method where you're using the 440 nuts, you need to take this side and you need to take this little piece out and this little piece out because otherwise the two nuts that you have double tighten are going, to, are going to hit these. And even if you're using a lock nut, which a 440 lock nut is a rarity these days. Um, I used to see them in the 80s and 90s, but I don't really see them around today. Yeah, you're still going to need you're still going to need, uh, you're gonna still gonna need to take out these points. But other, then, then if you do that, this pin, you can turn to a screw and you can reinforce it with anything on that side you want. Okay, so that you have really a thing here and a thing here and it sticks out, oh yeah, say about that far. And it will work, it'll work just fine. It'll, it'll work perfectly. So, um, let's see here. I've shown you the plunger. I've shown you the rod. Now, Let's show you the breech. Okay, so this is a long shot explorer breech. But as you can see, it is not out of the box. You have to take basically the standoffs that are right here. You have to trim them with a Dremel tool. 
and you have to put them into this whole thing, and this takes a lot of playing with to get right. You have to, and, and basically, what I did is I I put a brass a brass a, a brass barrel into here. You can see the outer tape there where the brass is, is wrapped around and then sealed with go to glue right behind the Merlin assembly. That hooks into that and then I filled this whole thing up with go to glue and I let it I let it dry for about two weeks. It did it. It did it. There's probably much better ways of doing it. You can probably fill this with epoxy. If I were to do it again I'd fill it with epoxy. You have to cut the top of this out to fit the top where the uh, breech pusher goes because the plastic would be right in the way. And to make that, not only to be more cosmetically cool and to say, well, I did it because I'm crazy with fiber tape, but also uh, to reinforce this top part right up here, I, I laminate, I used a cross laminated um, 3M Extreme packing tape, as I use on everything, about seven layers. And you can see it. Yeah. To, to reinforce the outside dimension of this. So when this is fused to this, this actually reinforces it, keeps it from bulging, it keeps your breach from breaking. Because believe me, with all this spring compression, even with stops, like right here, this finger can go in and bulge this and break your breach. It can happen. So you need protection from that. And, with, and because this and here and here are squeezed in here with the bolt and uh, going into here, uh, if you're clamped here, this isn't going to go anywhere. So that is a piece of engineering that I did. And finally, I think what a lot of people are waiting for, the plunger rod. That's right. That is my, uh, my Sentinel plunger rod right there. Completely different. There, this is my first prototype I made. There's a few things I might do different this time around. Uh, number, the next one I make, either one, I'm going to go to a number 8 rod rather than a number 10 rod. Or I'm gonna, or I'm gonna go grade two titanium, because this is this is uh, quite a hefty piece of, of of metal right here. However, this works absolutely perfectly. Um, the the it, it 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 works fantastic. Um, I wanted this to be adjustable, but then found that that's not a good idea. So this lock nut right here is probably going to be changed with a normal nut that's glued, and I, instead of a uh, in, instead of a um, a neoprene back washer. I will probably just use a washer back here, probably a nylon washer back here, a uh, nylon washer up here, and I will probably just use a normal screw here because I had to file this down so it wouldn't hit my pad. Because that's a, that's also a, uh, a number 10, 24 uh, lock nut. And then I filled the whole thing with epoxy. And I don't see any cracks. I don't see any problems. This thing has been driven really, really fast. Okay. But back here, what this is is a um, a one half inch by 0.19 inch um, nylon spacer that has been super glued into this whole thing into the threads. So I actually worked super glued in the threads, put this in, and then I used a brass 10 uh, 24 back here, and I completely and totally dremeled all this, all this. This used to be round. That used to be a round spacer. This that that nylon piece used to be a round spacer. And then I filed this to be like this, and then I filed this down so it rolls up on my catch, okay? And then this catch was uh, all done by hand. So this is all done by hand, okay? I might be uh, coming up with something that's a different plunger head, so I'm not relying on sentinel plunger heads. And I might be selling these one day, I'm not sure, but they are indestructible. This, this thing is absolutely indestructible. So let's go to our last thing that I did to the sentinel before I put it back together and I go one spring rather than two. And that's the spring assembly, okay? The inner spring for pre-compression reasons, and you may notice I like high pre-compression designs. That's a Magnus spring. That's just your normal Magnus spring that comes on a, on, a, on a Magnus. But this is not a Magnus spring at all. And it's really rooted here, hold on. That's right. That is a, that is a Century C810. If you go to Osh Hardware, that is a Century C810. The only thing is, okay, I, you see how this is flat right here? The, the, the coils on the end are flat, both sides, okay? That's my doing. I filed that. On a small coil like this, you really don't have to go flat. Like, if you got something that's like your normal retaliator gauge or your normal nerf gauges, a spring, like your normal long shot springs, you'll notice that a lot of those springs I don't file. You don't really need to. It doesn't really bite you. But once you get really thick coil, this, is, this wire is so thick 
that if you have this coil sitting on it, it's going to stab your plastic. It's going to make like spider cracks and eventually it will break your plunger head and it will break your plunger rod. Now a lot of people are saying, hey, you know, how are you doing this without breaking your plunger head? That's just a standard plunger. Well, first off, it's backed with epoxy. Well, you know it's backed with epoxy, but how are you keeping it? Well, one reason is when this rests against this, okay, take a good look. Rest against here, it's flat. There's no stresses. Th there's no stress points that are that that the stresses are hitting the plunger of uh, the plunger head, except for the force of the spring. But it's more uh, it, it's more spread out uniformly if you flatten your your spring coils. And once you go really big spring coils, you really have to do this. You really do. So, and then back here for pre-compression spacer, that's just duct tape. That's nothing special. Okay, it's just duct tape, no big deal. I have it here so I can hold this spring in here, but that's probably going to go. And this spring used to be a number 143 Hillman, okay? Unfortunately, they changed the specs for 143 Hillman. Now the spring that this would be is like 1 and 3 eighths or like 2 inches. It's long. And you could just cut it down, put it on one side in there. But this is a, a 1 quarter by, point, um, by 0.35 gauge spring. This is a real, like if you try to push it down, it's like real heavy. Um, I also use this on my bird of praise if I'm going 32 kilograms or better. In other words, I use a spring that's 0 .28, 0 0.028 gauge that's weaker than this on my normal bird of praise. And this is so powerful that I can hold 40 kilograms with that, no problem. Uh, the, uh, the catch, that's just a normal catch with the exception that it's been a little filed on the top simply because uh, this uh, right here is goes a little deeper. That's just my own, you know, prototyping thinking. And you'll notice also, I told this to, to the guy who made the artifact uh, breached sentinel, that you use, I use nerf screws that have deeper threads than the Busby screws for this reinforcement right here. What that does is it makes it so that there's three screws in here. There's this one, this one, and there's one hidden behind the catch. So if you take this out, and there it is. It makes it so it reinforces better into the whole thing. So this kind of power does not mess up screws. So this, yeah, that broke. That broke because of another mishap I did. It was actually not this stress related. But um, I replaced that with a 440 screw right there. That, that's doing just fine. Eventually, I'm probably going to run a 440 screw with a nut all the way through. Um, no problem. So if this ever strips out, I'll just drill this out and put a big screw going through there. No big deal. No big loss. Um, and other than that, uh, I got some felt right here. Uh, basically soft Velcro right here. So when you have the magazine in there, it's really tight. It doesn't rattle around. Um, I wanted this to be tight to feed the best. And finally, it does, it does have a half twist Merlin on it. If you can see that. Yeah, there is a half twist Merlin on this thing. It throws it, um, it, it's a, this one not as good as the other one, but this one is a right hand twist instead of, is this right hand twist? I thought this was right hand twist. Yeah, this one's a, uh, a right hand twist from the firing position instead of a left hand twist. And what that does is it makes it so if you have like rifle darts that are left hand, it will negate the rifling. Uh, let's say like V3s and you don't like them all that much. <laughs> yeah, that's what that will do. So... So there you go. It's all it's all taken apart. I'm gonna put it back together. I'm gonna with single spring, so it won't be as spectacular as it normally is. But at least my my, my plunger handle's not gonna break, and I'm gonna fire it. Yay! I'm well, sorry I couldn't show you the putting it in and getting it into the shell. You could imagine with the forces involved, the amount of pre-compression I have. This is really hard to get it to this point where I have it assembled and it, it's ready to go. It is very difficult okay um but as you can see i can take the breech off i can have the breech finger right there you can see all that yeah um it is it, it, it's it's time consuming there's a lot of tweaking you have to do to get it in there because your springs are going a lot farther uh, and have a lot more um a lot more travel to it yeah but um my first prototype x sentinel the next one, I think, is going to be a lot better than even this one. Actually, I need that screw loose. What am I doing? Yeah, the next one is going to be really, really something. I mean, wow, because I'm going to use a better breech. I'm going to use a better everything, okay? 
but yeah so I got it to this point I just got to put in my breech and and put in all my screws and test it out okay so while I have this apart I wanted to show you guys the breech when it's open because I got everything put back together there it is there's porn star right there all right as you can see I mean quite a hefty spring man uh, interlocking breech goes up to there you got a still a little room to push it so you, so you can put a little bit of leverage on the push finger. And, uh, yeah. It's quite nice. Let's load this baby up give it a test fire. Okay, so the barrel, uh, the barrel on this thing is suboptimal. Uh, because it's only running a 16K at this point. It's not running with this spring also in there. So let's see what it does. Hopefully I don't break it. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this thing's been a, been a monster, man. It really has. I just put it back together. As you can uh, probably note, putting this back together with one hand of the camera is tough. Uh, so I couldn't quite do that. I'm running version 2X starts. Huh, 105? Uh, ouch. <laughs> 107? <laughs> yeah, with that heavier plunger rod, it really really does kind of 113 <laughs> yeah really need that second spring in there 105 you know let's take Merlin off shall we take Merlin off let's just take Merlin off try that out okay hold on a second okay let's let's take Merlin off oh there we go 145. So that's six. This is 16 kilograms. This isn't anything big. 155. Yeah, it's just it 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 needs more power because of the Merlin. So the same thing happens with like 14 kilogram long shots. When you throw a Merlin on there, you know, and it's it's just not powerful enough. You know what I mean? Because it needs to be fast. Now you throw it on like a 200 uh, foot per second blaster. It's the difference between maybe 220 without and 210 with but if you throw it in on a lower yell yeah forget about it it's just not powerful enough to push it through the rifling but at 200 feet per second or so the difference of performance is nil okay it, it, it's 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 enough to where you know throwing a fucking nine to one spin on something doesn't take that much but when you're talking about something less than i would say 18 kilograms then the performance loss is not worth the spin that a, that a, that a half twist Merlin can do. Now, a quarter twist Merlin doesn't have as much loss to it because you're not you're not turning as much into rotational energy. But on like a 20, 21 kilogram blaster, I'm noticing that a lot of that power at the very end is lost, and and this and the Merlin makes use of it. And that's a theory, as where like a lot of your 14, 16 kilogram blasters, it's not lost. You know what I mean? You, you you're using pretty much all your air that you can use. It's more efficient. This is why I'm starting to I'm starting to get this theory that on 20 kilogram blasters, uh, Merlin is better. You know, so let's fire a couple more. 155. Oh, oh. Yeah. 161, and that's with this really heavy plunger rod in there. Okay. One forty nine. And last one, last one. 166 feet per second. So that's with one spring, that's not two. With two, I can get it up into two, two tens, two twenties. Okay, but unfortunately I'm breaking shit. So I gotta, I gotta just go with.